guys, this is Leah with Scott Leroy Marketing, and in today's tip video, I'm going to show you some shortcuts and best practices to laying multiple fields on a PDF, or maybe it's a seller's disclosure that you need to send and have your clients fill in, as well as sign. I'm going to show you how you can find out if the seller disclosure um, in your area does require you to manually lay the check boxes and text fields for your clients to fill that in or if that's automatically set up for your clients to be able to fill that in. Um, these shortcuts will also apply to if you're working with a PDF and you need to lay initial boxes or signature fields you know, down multiple different pages. Uh, this will allow you to copy and paste those fields, select multiple fields so you can adjust the settings on those in bulk. All right, so the first thing we need to do is actually pull the form into an envelope in order to add fields to it. Now, just a quick note that if it is a seller's disclosure, you'll be able to tell if your clients can fill that out automatically if you see fields on the form once you've brought it into the envelope and added the recipients on it. And I'll show you that firsthand. Okay, however, if you pull the form into the envelope and there are not the text and check boxes already added on, you will need to manually add that in in order for your clients to be able to fill that in. So it will depend on how the form is set up for your area. All right, so first things first, you can add the forms to your DocuSign room. So if you are adding um, a DocuSign interactive form, so if you're working with a seller's disclosure, for example, um, make sure you're clicking add on the top right of your documents tab of your DocuSign room. Okay, so that's where we're starting. The documents tab of your DocuSign room. Click on add on the top right. If you need to get your seller's disclosure, that'll be accessed from your DocuSign forms. Now, if you are working on a PDF for this tip, right, and you need to lay, let's say, initial and signature boxes on the PDF in order for your clients to sign, you can also add the PDF by clicking add on the top right to select from your computer, and that will search your computer. Right, and you'll be able to tell the difference between DocuSign interactive forms, which means, you know, if you open the form, it's automatically fillable. Uh, by the form icon, so that blue form icon will indicate that the form is fillable by the agent automatically uh, versus a PDF, just a heads up, is never fillable when you open it in your DocuSign room. Um, so with that being said, initial and signature fields are automatically added to any DocuSign interactive forms. So if it has that blue form icon, typically you'll see the initial and signature fields automatically add to the form once it's in the envelope, so not when you open it here, but once you pull it into the envelope, which we're going to do next, versus a PDF. If you're working with a PDF, you will need to always manually add initial and signature fields. So if the agent on the other side sent you an email with the form attached, you save it to your computer as a PDF, and you need to lay initial and signature fields on that, that would need to be done manually for your clients to sign, and I'll be showing you that. So first thing we need to do is go ahead and select the forms we want to pull into our envelope. So to do that, we'll hover our mouse over the form preview and go ahead and select the forms. The dot that appears on the top left, the check dot, that will select which forms you'll be bringing into the envelope. And once you select the forms, the check dots here on the top left, you'll notice that a bulk action menu appears on the very top center of your screen. And you'll want to go ahead and select the Create Envelope icon, which will look like a pen. Right, and again, you won't see this bulk actions menu until you've actually checked off any forms by hovering and clicking on the dot that appears on the top left. And then go ahead and click Create Envelope. And right, from the envelope, you can reorder any forms here if you would like to. So I can reorder those. Um, I can add additional room docs from here as well, just a heads up. And I can also add recipients. So you'll need to go ahead and add recipients for any interactive forms for the initial and signature fields to automatically display. So depending on which kind of form you're working on, we'll need to click on add recipients you want to select the top option from that drop down. So pre-tagged roles, okay, if you have an interactive form in your envelope, you'll have that pre-tagged roles option. Okay, if you're only working with a PDF, 
you'll you'll want to select the room participants. However, if you have the pre-tagged roles option, make sure you're selecting that. And from here, we'll just simply want to go ahead and connect up seller one, seller two, or if you're working with the buyer, buyer one and two, or anyone that needs to sign. So you only need to be adding signing parties at this time if someone needs to view. Right, but it's, if it's not a form that you need to sign, you don't necessarily need to add yourself to the envelope. And we'll click Add Selected. All right, so adding the recipients is the main thing to do in the envelope. And we'll click on Next on the top right to get into actually editing the form. Now, how you'll be able to tell if the form, so for example, if it's a seller's disclosure, as we've been talking about, right, depending on how the form is set up will depend on if your client can automatically fill that in when they receive it, or if you need to actually add the text and, you know, check boxes to the form manually for them to be able to fill that in. Okay, so you'll notice um, these fields, so I'm going to show you an example of one that is already set up for my clients to fill in. All right? So my form here does have the ability for my clients to fill that in. So if you are seeing check boxes and, and uh, text fields on this part of your form, right? once it's in the envelope, that means your client will be able to fill that in. All right? yeah. However, oh, pretty big storm going on uh, over here if you guys hear that. Um, however, you can tell that the seller disclosure, I have a second copy pulled in if in the case that, you know, there are no text boxes or check boxes on the form. At this point, once it's in the envelope, that does mean that you will need to manually add those fields in in order for your clients to fill that in. And I will show you how to do that in bulk. All right, so in this case, there are a bunch of check boxes here. So we typically will want to add those check boxes in. However, that's a little tiresome to do that all one by one. So what you can do is actually on the left hand side, you can select the check box option on the left hand side. So you will see these fields going down your screen. Select check box and you can go ahead and click to drop that check box. Now if you need to lay multiple at a time, my first suggestion is if you click on shift on your keyboard prior to dropping it, so you drop a field by clicking your mouse. So if you hold shift first and then click your mouse, you'll notice it keeps following your mouse. So you can continue to drop that. So you just want to hold shift on your keyboard in order to drop, continue dropping that. Okay, because if I release shift, that will go away. All right, so that's my first tip is you can, can hold shift to continue dropping those. You can also copy and paste uh, check boxes. So for example, especially in this section here, you know, that's typically the same thing for a bunch of rows here. So if I hold shift on my keyboard and let's say I lay these top three. Right, so I can tell that these fields are connected because they're highlighted blue. So by holding shift, it did, you know, make those all selected. However, also you can select all in order to copy, you know, three in a row by clicking, holding your mouse and drawing a a rectangle around that, so drawing a box around the fields you'd like to copy, you'll notice we'll also highlight that blue. So you'll want to go ahead and select the multiple fields, and then on your keyboard, you can click Control C if you have a PC, or Command C if you have a Mac, and that is a shortcut to copy, so Control C as in cat if you have a PC, or Command C for Mac users to copy those fields. Then I can click on the form wherever I kind of want to lay those, and I can do Control V as in Victor, okay, or Command V for any Mac users. Okay, okay so Control C is to copy, and Control V will be to paste. Command V for Mac users. And you'll notice, right, mine laid a little out of sorts, like over here. No worries, I can just simply click to adjust that. And I can keep going down my field here, or my form, to click to keep pasting that to lay these text boxes, or check boxes a little quicker here. And actually, you know, uh, you can adjust these, so I could lay, you know, I could go ahead and highlight all of these to copy and continue pasting those down. So it doesn't just have to be, you know, three at a time. You can do that in bulk to help expedite this.
Now, uh, editing and moving these uh, check boxes is super easy. So you can move those one at a time by clicking, dragging. You can also delete it on the right hand side. You can move multiple at a time. So if you want to move all of these down, just go ahead and select all to drag those around. All right, so that will help you go ahead and add multiple. Now, just a heads up with how fields work in as far as text boxes and check boxes, how those work in DocuSign, you'll notice on the left hand side that is a specific color because it does coordinate to the client's color on the top left. So if you want both clients to be able to fill this in, right? if you want both uh, clients to be able to collaborate on the seller disclosure, you can add that feature to any text boxes that you add or check boxes. So for example, on the left-hand side, if I were to lay a text box, right, since it's yellow, that means that only the client who is assigned that color on the drop-down on the left would be able to fill that in. Right, so if it's a field that you want both of your clients to fill in, you will need to add the collaboration tool, or setting rather, on the right-hand side. So you'll notice, it, the settings panel will pop up as long as you are selecting a field. Okay, so select a field and the settings panel will pop up on the left hand side. If you scroll down under collaboration, if it's a text field you want them both to collaborate on, we want to click on recipients can collaborate. And you can actually do this for multiple fields at a time by selecting multiple. Right, and remember we select multiple by just clicking, holding our mouse to draw a square around those fields. And then you can go ahead and turn that on for all of those fields. All right, so you can see those are turned on now. All right, so same concept goes if this is a form that needs to have buyer and initial or seller initials or signature uh, fields added in. So just remember if it's a DocuSign interactive form, meaning it was a form I could just start editing when I pulled that up on the documents tab, right? It has that blue icon. You will not need to manually add in the fields. Okay, you'll see the initial fields or signature fields are manually added or are automatically added to the form. If it's a PDF, right, you will need to add in initial boxes and signature fields manually for your clients to fill that in. So this is just a quick tip on expediting that process as well, adding you know the initial boxes or signature fields to the form in bulk. All right, so I can do that by clicking on, it's a similar process here on the left-hand side. So I can go ahead and select the initial fields to lay that. So just a reminder that it does depend on which color is displaying here, because that does correlate with that specific client on the top left. So if I need both clients to be able to sign, I do need to switch over to grab the initial box for my other respective client. And of course, you can always click to move these around, adjust those, delete them on the right hand side and so forth. So now I need to lay that on every single page. You know, this uh, form is only four pages, but you know, an offer, our offer is about 13 pages in North Carolina. So, you know, that's a lot of fields to manually add one at a time. Instead, you can go ahead and highlight both, right? Click and hold to drag a box. It'll select both. I can do Command, Command C for Mac users or Control C for PC users on your keyboard. So C for copy. And then wherever you need to lay that on the form again, just go ahead and click on the form. Do Control V for V as in Victor or Command V as in Victor for Mac users. And you can go ahead and paste that on the bottom of every page. And of course, you can always drag to adjust those right away as well. All right, guys, if you have any questions on shortcuts within uh, the forms for PDFs or for the seller disclo disclosure, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. That is support at scottleroymarketing.com. You can put attention my name in the subject line. That's L-E-A-H, Leah. And then I'll come to me directly. Again, that's support at scottleroymarketing.com. If you have any questions at all, please just let me know. All right, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I hope this makes your process a little faster. Take care, guys.
Hey guys, this is Leah with Scott Leroy Marketing. In today's tip video, I'm going to show you how you can add multiple fields at a time, a few shortcuts on adding fields to your DocuSign forms, whether that be a PDF or a seller's disclosure that you need to add multiple fields to. If those are check boxes, it has a lot of check boxes you need to add for your clients to fill that in, or you need to add multiple initial boxes. I'm going to show you how to copy and paste those and add adjust the settings and bulk as well for those. Now, whether you have to do this for your seller's disclosure, I've noticed it depends on your area, and I will show you how to check on that. However, Depending on the form, how the form is set up, when you pull that into your envelope, some seller disclosures are set automatically to allow your clients to fill that out. Okay, or um, if you see text fields on the form once it's in the envelope, that does mean your client could fill that out, and I'll show you the difference. However, if you're not seeing any fields on the form in the envelope, that does mean you'll need to manually add that. So I'll show you how to tell the difference. All right, first things first, we do want to go ahead and add our forms to your DocuSign room. So I'm in the Documents tab of my room. And we'll want to click on Add on the very top right to access our DocuSign forms, which will be that second option down. All right, so once you select Add on the top right, DocuSign Forms, that second option down, it will take you to select the forms, and you can do so from the group on the left-hand side or your libraries. Okay, so depending on how you typically search for your forms, go ahead and do that. You can use the search uh, field at the very top to search for that seller disclosure, whatever form that you need to pull in. And you can click the checkbox to the left of the form name and click Add Selected. Feel free to pause the video if you're still looking for that form to pull that in. All right, this um, this tip will also apply to PDFs. So if you need to add a PDF to your DocuSign room to maybe add signature fields, initial fields for your client to be able to electronically sign, okay, this will apply to PDFs. So you can do the same process by clicking Add on the top right, and you can add PDFs from your computer directly. So I'll just search your computer. So you know if the agent on the other side emailed you a copy of the offer, for example, as a PDF, you'll just want to save that to your computer, and you can add that to your DocuSign room to add initial and signature boxes for your clients to sign right away. All right, so once I have that form in my DocuSign room, you can go ahead and click on it to open it. So if it is a DocuSign interactive form, and I can tell the difference based on this blue icon here, you'll see where that says form. That indicates the form is automatically fillable, and the initial and signature fields should automatically display on the form in the envelope. Okay, versus if you're working on a PDF, you will see a PDF icon as well in the, in the, um, in the room here. You'll see that icon on the form preview. So, of course, to edit the form, you can simply click on it to pull that open and edit it right away. So, if that is a DocuSign interactive form with that blue icon, that will allow you to open it and simply fill in the fields. All right, PDFs, you will not be able to edit that until we pull that into the envelope. So, what I'll do, once you've gone ahead and edited that, make sure you click Save and Close on the top right. And again, these fields will not be available quite yet if this is a PDF. All right, but we can go ahead and pull the form into our envelope. So to do so, I'll simply hover my mouse over the form. And then on the top left, you'll see a, a check dot appear, radio dot for you to click, and that will check the forms that you need to pull into the envelope. 